Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I really want to talk about what exactly the variables of interest are in a particular study. So what is the definition of a variables of interest? So I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. And what I'm trying to do here is get into what do I mean by the variables of interest and then sort of give you some tips of why people actually talk about the variables of interest rather than some other terminology towards the end. So please stick with it. So what exactly are the variables of interest? So from my perspective, it is really all about thinking of the different factors and features that change within a particular domain of what you're trying to study. So in the context of what you're trying to study, right? I don't know what you're, if you're trying to study element or elements, if you're trying to study elephants, if you're trying to study, um, you know, human beings, if you're trying to study, maybe it's water molecules, what are the different factors that change? What are the things that change within that particular research domain, right? In elephants, maybe it is a sort of mating season, right? Maybe it is the the sex or gender of the particular element or elephant. Jeez. Um, what are the things that actually change that can impact what you're trying to study, right? So those are the key things that you want to look at. So often what researchers will say or what people will say is the variables of interest uh, include the dependent variable as well as the independent variables and the control variables. And um, just stick with that idea for a second, though. I have something to say about that towards the end. And, um, you know, these are the sort of key things. What we're trying to do is look at trying to predict some sort of thing or understand some sort of thing in your variables or in your context. And then what we do is we try to use these variables, right? So the independent variables, the or other things that might impact this dependent variable. Maybe it's the control. So these are other factors that you're trying to sort of rule out and sort of control for that you are kind of um, interested in or that might impact the particular thing that you're trying to study. So once again, if you haven't watched my other videos, what you're trying to do with any particular research study is trying trying to actually understand and sort of resolve the variance within a dependent variable or trying to solve some sort of puzzles of why the dependent variable, whatever you're looking at, is um, changing or, you know, why why does this actually occur? And what you use are these dependent independent variables. You normally use, you know, one or two independent variables and you try to see how that actually um, impacts a dependent variable, and then you try to explain the relationship between the independent and dependent variables, right? And then you have all these control variables that are controlling for things that are not really um, not really relevant to what you're trying to do. So why are these variables of interest important? Well, what the 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 reason why we'd actually want to specify and talk about particular re, uh, variables of interest is in any particular domain. It doesn't matter what you're looking at. Um, you know, my background, I studied engineering, I, chemical engineering, I studied um, sociology, I studied um, business, I studied economics, all sorts, a bunch of stuff throughout my career so far. And everything, they're all the same. Um, they have variables. There, there is in any particular domain, there are things that happen that are kind of... Um, that, that are sort of random events that they necessarily, they they happen within a particular thing that you're trying to study, but they don't exactly are not really relevant to what you're trying to study. So in any particular domain, there's infinite number of features or things that can change that can impact your dependent variable. And anybody that's worked in the lab or did any kind of experiments or did any sort of research study will know that that is really um, it'll become painfully clear when you do that because there's always a sort of infinite number of features that happen. And what we try to do is sort of clump or make sense of the variables of interest 
that we think are really relevant, right? So these are the independent, the, and the control variables, really relevant to explaining the dependent variable. And then we have another term that we just say, well, these are all the other variables, and this is called the error term. These are all the er uh, other variables that, that, that they, they do matter, but we can't control for them or we can't sort of rule them out. There's just like random noise that happens, right? So craziness that happens. So, so for example, if you're a, a social scientist and you're studying personality um, or maybe some personal characteristics for a person, what you'll end up getting is maybe you know that sort of there's sex differences between um, personality. Maybe that there are you know, maybe age differences between personality. Those are things that matter to you. So those are the variable interests. But then, you know, when that person comes into the particular study and you ask them a bunch of questions or you survey them, there could be like terrible weather that day. And that weather could impact what how they're going to answer that particular outcome, right? So we do know that there's seasonal affective disorder, right? That um, in, in the wintertime, people are a little bit more grumpier than the, the summertime because of the, you know, poor sunlight and all that kind of stuff. So depending on when you're measuring, it's going to impact what's going on. We can't control for all those crazy things that happen in life. We just really can't. So we have this other term that we just call the error term. And then we focus on these variables of interest that we think are important. Um, now, why is it that I, I was sort of alluding to why it's really important to sort of suggest that that these are variables of interest rather than something else. So we're really careful. Uh, scientists are extremely careful. Social scientists are extremely careful, particularly now in the last few years, because there's been um, some scandals that have happened, I guess, in the last few years about understanding sort of causal relationships and causal mechanisms. Um, that there is, and, and you know, I have other videos about that if you're interested, but what we're really doing or what we're trying to suggest is that there is a lot of other factors that we can't explain in this sort of causal understanding what something actually causes something else is really hard to do. So scientists actually like to use the term, and you know, I'm one of them, I actually like to use the term of variables of interest because that sort of removes any sort of con uh, notion of anything that is causal, right? So with an independent and dependent variable, now we often still have to write those terminologies in the journals that you're submitting to or talking to um, just because that's the, you know, that's that's the, the norms, right? But, you know, I'm, I'm a big sort of, I'm in more in favor of using this sort of terminology of variables of interest because in, in any particular domain and anything that you're looking at, everything is related to everything else, right? So that's one thing that we do know. And this is kind of a problem with statistics that, have, that we've been trying to address for years. And it's really hard to address. It was, you know, back in the day, this was, you know, a thing that people were actually thinking about. And, um, you know, about the particular issues of like, can we, can we explain one particular thing um, when there's all these other sort of factors that are related to that one particular thing. And it turns out that it's really hard to do. The sort of statistical methods that we use, which is called regression, which is the big tool that scientists like to use, um, they explicitly, one of the explicit assumptions is that they're not sort of independently or they're not, uh, or that they're all the variables in the thing that you're studying are independently related to each other. So they're, they're, they don't, they're not affected by each other. Really, that's really what it means, right? So um, you can look it up. It's called the I, IID assumptions um, independently. Uh, it, so it's uh, identically independently distributed variables is what you're trying to look at. And they just call it it's short, short form IID. Anyways, I'm probably digressing. But I, really what we assume with that kind of framework is that everything is independent. Turns out that this is basically not true in most settings. It's really hard to sort of show if anything is independent and not. And there's tools and statistical tools to try to demonstrate this and try to rule this particular thing out. Instrumental variables, if you want to look at that stuff. Um, but it's really hard to do. 
And um, because of this, we're still sort of faced with this problem that we should maybe be using different terminology. And, and, and I think, you know, depending on what circles you're running in and the discussions you have with different scientists and stuff, they're going to be in favor of this versus that. Um, you know, it just really depends. But, but the variables of interest, I think, has been becoming a little bit more... Um, in favor, I guess, in terms of terminology and using when you write your research papers that are out there, right? And this is particularly tr true because that the variables of interest sort of removes the, any of the terminology that's related to sort of causation. Um, because independent sort of demonstrates, independent variables sort of suggest that they're independent of each other, right? But that's not true. Dependent variables sort of assumes that, yeah, something's de dependent on something else. You can maybe get closer to that with an experimental design, like a randomized controlled trial, but still you're making a big assumption there that those are independent, right? Um, or dependent on something else. So some people actually even change that language of the dependent variable and just call it a criterion. Um, variable and you know depending on what circles again you you're running in they're going to be in favor of one versus the other a little bit more um, and you know this is especially true when you are looking at sort of post hoc data or archival data that's already been specified so if you're analyzing data that is archival in any sort of way it becomes even more prevalent and more important to think about these sort of non-causal terms and think about you know removing causal language as much as possible because um, you cannot demonstrate because you're not mem uh, you're not manipulating anything in any sort of way you're not manipulating a variable and looking at what the particular treatment effects are um, you can't do that in any sort of effective way so um, you're kind of left with you know, just um, knowing that these variables are probably related and you can't sort of control and sort of factor those out as much as possible. So again, um, variables of interest, I'm going to sort of reiterate what that is. Um, variables of interest, you know, I define it as basically all the different factors and features that you think change that impact the um, what you're trying to look at in a particular research study or context of, of your study. And it's really important to use this language because it's less causal and SRA has a less causal language than other ones that are currently um, available. But, you know, given the context that you are in, you know, maybe you're watching this video for a particular class, you, you should probably listen to what is happening in your class rather than this particular video, right? Um, so it's really important to think about the particular uh, the sort of causal language that is behind other sort of terminology because it's really hard to rule these things out because everything is related to everything else um, in the real world. And that's really hard to rule out. So yeah, it's important. All right. So that's what I wanted to talk about. It's kind of a complicated concept that I wanted to get across and have a discussion about because of something that came up in my own personal life in the last few months of having a discussion like this so all right take care um if you like this video make sure you give me a thumbs up and as well as do subscribe to the channel i do appreciate it take care and have a wonderful day bye